network engineering. Uh, I don't know, did you reboot it? Look, there is there are no alerts in the monitoring system, so the network has to be fine. Look, no, I told him it's it's his crappy application, okay? The network just moves packets around. No, no, not, look. Look, who has the CCNA? I do, right? The network is my baby. It's like the apple of networks, okay? It just works. Oh man, we have all been there. Am I right, you guys? It's the network. No, it's the server. No, it's the application. It's full moon, it's solar flares, whatever you want. French fries. Everyone has fingers to point. Like, how can you narrow down the problem? How can you determine what is or isn't the root cause of some network problem, a performance problem, whatever it is? Packet analysis can get you a long way there. It can help you eliminate things. Sometimes it can you can find the problem. You can nail it. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, as I mentioned in the write-up, I hope you read it because I didn't want it to yammer all day, just part of the day. Now I'm skipping some of the questions that you'd really want to do and some of the legwork up front before you get to analysis. But we're going to assume we've already got a data capture of the problem and we want to analyze the capture. So that's where we're going to start. Let's jump in. So you've got this capture file. Where do you start? You've got data packets. How do you find the problem? So I've got a, a fresh install of Wireshark default options. There are some good resources for optimally setting up Wireshark to solve different kinds of problems. You can look at, I think Laura Chappelle has one. Um, Han Song Bay has got one. Great stuff good information. I'm just going to start with default and as I go I'll change things and I'll tell you you know why I'm changing them why it's useful for me. Uh, let's make the font bigger yeah. so it's easier to see. No, There we go. Okay so just a couple things right quick. I'm going to change under preferences the layout. I like to use this this one two three um, whatever I, uh, layout <laughs> first um, because I really want let me get this out of the way I want the these um, you know the packet information this frame to have as much space as possible every now and then I do want to see the packet details um, so I want them to be available but otherwise I just want them out of the way uh, and then let's change under name resolution let's disable transport names because you know, I just want to see the numbers. I don't want to see the random weird names that you know, random port numbers can be. I just want to see the, the numbers. So that's the bare minimum I'm going to do for now. Let's jump in. Okay, so what's a good, where's a good place to start? Um, some people like the easy button down here, this little circle. You click on that and it brings up your errors and warnings. We've got, you know, some things here. Are they important? I don't know. Duplicate acts, retransmissions, oh gosh. You know, maybe it is the network. So, so you can, you know, click on these and you can go to these packets and look at that, look, retransmission, definitely. So that's happening. Um, it's useful. You can look at, what is it, Iograph under statistics. This is, you probably want to do something like that. Okay, this is packets per you know tick here. Also good. Um, you can change it to bits. Look at the throughput. Okay, you can zoom in and stuff. Let me show you where I start. Um, I use the time sequence graphs. So what you want to do? This is like I said, this is FTP because I mean pretty much all cat people use FTP to get their pictures. You need to find. Um, the direction of the data flow. So in FTP, we're downloading, so it's going from the server to the client. Um, and this particular graph is just in one direction. So if you click on the wrong one, like an act from the client, and try to look at this graph, it's useless. There's nothing there. So you have to click on 
a packet in the in the data flow. So here's a packet from the server, statistics, TCP stream graph. I like time sequence graph, TCP trace, because it has a lot of information. I've written about this particular one on my site at packetbomb.com that like list what all the different little um, markings and colors and whatnot mean. So I'm not gonna walk through all of them. So this is a graph of data, byte, sequence number, all the same thing, on the y-axis. I have relative, you know, sequence numbers turned on, so it always, the sequence number will always start with one in my trace, when in reality it's just some random 32-bit number. Uh, is it random? I don't know. I'm not really sure how sequence numbers are generated. Uh, I can probably Google that for you. I'm not going to. Um, but, so, with data transfer, with TCP, the sequence number is how TCP keeps track of what data has been sent, what data is lost, needs to be retransmitted, etc. So for every single byte of data that gets transmitted, the sequence number increases by that same number. One byte gets sent, sequence number increases by one. A thousand bytes get sent, the sequence number increases by a thousand, right? Your x-axis is time. So we're just literally looking at the number of bytes being transferred over time. So what you want to see here is sort of a smooth line going from the bottom left to the upper right. And because, I mean, this is, this is throughput, the steeper the line, the faster the data is being transferred because it takes less time to transfer that data, right? So when you look at this, I'm looking for big wins. I don't want to have to drill in to minutia and really have to get into the, the subtleties of TCP. I want, I, when I open this graph, I'm praying for some big wins. And you know what? We got them. We totally got them. You see these big flat spots? That's a big red flag. The, a flat spot means no data is being transferred. We've got some amount of time, I don't know how much it is, where no data is being sent. So we want to find out why that is. So I'm going to zoom in. You can click and drag. Zoom and hit I if you want. Where It'll zoom in wherever your mouse is. All these little uh, I-beam thingies, those are actual packets being transmitted. So the distance between them is time. And then this line, sort of gray line underneath, are the acknowledgments for the packets. So what we have here, zooming out, you know, is this flat spot. And then we have this little packet, this one little single packet. If you click on it, it will magically go to that packet in the trace. And that's super handy. So I've clicked on it. This is the first packet after some pause, and here it is. Now, I want to know what the pause is. How long is it? So what I'm going to do is add, I think by default, the time here is time since beginning of capture. You can change it if you want, but I'm just going to add a delta column. So there's two delta, if you uh, um, expand is the word I want, the frame, you get time delta from previous captured packet and previous displayed packet. So if right now I'm, I'm not using any display filter, so you're seeing all the packets in this capture. But if I were using a display filter, like filtering on a particular connection, and I'm looking at delta, uh, and I'm using, say, previous captured frame, then it's going to show me the delta from the previous captured frame, even though it may not be shown to me at this time. So if this were a filtered display right now, like there were other packets in this capture that I'm not seeing, there could be a thousand packets between this one and this one. And it's going to show me the time from the previous captured packet that I can't even see. So for this, I don't want that. I want to know the delta from the previous displayed frame. So if I'm using a, a display filter, it's going to show me a, a capture relative to the, the packets I'm actually looking at. I hope that made sense. So I'm going to do apply as column, and it puts this ridiculously long thing up here that I'm going to edit because it offends me. Just call it delta. Now, we can see that, let's do this, get a little, get that out of the way, just to create some space around it. We can see that this packet says the delta is 182 milliseconds. What that means is this packet arrived 182 milliseconds after the previous one. So the client sent an ACK, 182 milliseconds went by, we got the next data frame. So 
I'm thinking, hmm, sounds like it's the, the server being slow. But we also want to kind of know what's going on in terms of where we are with the data flow. Do we have a lot of back at, do we have a lot of data in flight currently? Do we, are we all caught up? How can we figure that out? Well, we can do a quick bit of sequence number analysis and right click here. So I've expanded TCP, the TCP bit here and find sequence number and then you can apply as column. You can do for the next sequence number, you can apply as column and the acknowledgement number apply as column. Now, I'm, I would normally shorten these, but I won't right now. Let's pull this out. Now, if I click on sequence number, you can see the sequence number is in the TCP header. And the acknowledgement number is in the TCP header. Next sequence number, that's not in the TCP header. Anything in Wireshark that has these square brackets around it, that's not actually in the data. That's a Wireshark informational. It's a calculation or just it's, it's informational data to you that Wireshark is displaying, but it's not really in the packet. So the next sequence number is the current sequence number plus the amount of data that was sent because then that should be the next sequence number of the next packet. So what we're going to do is go up here. We're, we've currently got that one, the delayed one highlighted. We'll go to the act before it and just talk about the last few digits here. 42225. That was one too many twos. 4225. That's saying I've received all the data up to and including 4224. And the next sequence number I expect to receive is 4225. The next packet is indeed 4225. And the previous data packet, 3649, uh, it sent 576 bytes. So that makes the next sequence number 4225. We say, yep, we expect 4225, and guess what? It, the next one is 4225. That means there's no outstanding data after this act. We've acknowledged everything. Then we get the next one at 182 milliseconds. There's no reason why the server should wait. So we can say, well, what's the round trip time? Perhaps it took time for the act to get there, the server to send the next one to us. Fair question. If you go to the beginning of the capture, always always get the beginning of the capture. You need, you really need the three-way handshake. It has a lot of information in, in there that we'll cover another time. But if you look at the delta between the SIN and SINAC, well, this is like three milliseconds. This is actually, I did this in um, Amazon AWS. So there's very little delay. So 182 milliseconds, that's not round trip time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say definitively that particular delay was not the client. Um, might be the server, potentially could be something in the network introducing latency, but you know, for now we're, we can say that one's for sure not the client. Now let's sort our packets by the delta column. And what this is gonna show me is, click it twice to get it in descending order, is all the packets that have, you know, a delay, like the one we just saw, which is this one. So these first ones up here starting with six seconds and three, almost three, two, these are all FTP control protocol stuff like typing in a super secure password and a username and then quitting, setting the, the type. These things um, we probably don't really care about in terms of performance. These are user interaction for the most part. Then we have a fin packet that's 727 milliseconds. We also don't care about delay before fin packets. That's at the end of the connection. Things are being cleaned up, closed down, um, saying bye-bye. We don't care about delays before fin packets. So that let's move on. Now we have the one we already found, 182 milliseconds. And we have eight of these guys that are all FTP data from the server from 142 millisecond delay up to 182. Then we, the next one after that drops to 64 milliseconds, basically, and it's an ACK from the server to the client. Then we drop to 38, which is actually the client to the server. That's the first one that we might care about from the client, 38 milliseconds. Um, but these, to me, are the big ones that I'm looking at. There's eight of them, all, you know, roughly 150, 180 milliseconds. And if we go back to our graph and we zoom back out, we can see these flat spots are one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. So I can tell you, because I've already looked, that all these flat spots, they do correspond to these eight packets. And these are big wins. If I'm talking about later on digging into these like, you know, 10, 12, 20, 30 milliseconds, they later on, if I'm trying to eke out more performance, I might dig into them. But right now, I want big wins, and these are big wins. And none of them are the client machine. I can definitely say not the client. Could be the server. So what I want is a capture taken on the server and see if I see the same delays on the server. And if so, I'm going to go to Mr. Sysheadman and say, Hey, buddy, we need to have a chat about your server. Um, if you don't see the delays there, then, well, we need to dig into the network and try to figure out where the delay is coming from. So that was um, that was actually fairly quick. I mean, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but that was a real, real, there's a lot more things I could dig into, but I don't want to make these super long for you guys right now. Uh, we will definitely dive into other types of analysis things in a lot of detail going forward. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, another capture file. I'm going to put it up with this post. I want you to have a look at it. You tell me, where, where is the delay? Is it, it, let's just say it'll be at a server capture. Is it on the server or is it not on the server? So we can either eliminate the server or maybe we need to look at the client or potentially the network. Leave a comment what you think. Email me, carry at packetbomb.com. Um, we've got more content on the website got some that are only available to email subscribers if you really like this stuff then I encourage you to subscribe because that's where I do I'm a chatting with peeps about the packets and thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful and if you didn't I guess I'm sorry maybe. the network is fine okay I mean look no I, I don't know I don't I don't I don't know okay I just uh hey dude what's wrong with the router no, we need those man go plug that back in